Games, Comics, Anime, Codenamed Epic. Hello, and you are listening to Codenamed Epic Comic Podcast, uh, where we are interviewing the authors and creators of Penguins vs. Possums. Hello. This is Dismal Elephant, here with... Kirby Kidd. John Bring. Sebastian Kadlecik. Um, and we are going to be talking about the uh, newly released comic, the first issue of uh, Penguins versus Possums. I keep on wanting to say Possums versus Penguins. I don't, uh, know don't feel bad. I, I, I often call it that myself. Maybe that's who you're aligned with. That Maybe. is why we shorten it to, I know there exists another uh, player versus player, but we usually just refer to it as PvP. PvP. Yes. <coughs> there could be multiple It's the new PvP. Of... It's the better <laughs> the, PvP. The better PvP? Uh-huh. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Better than player versus player. Down. Hmm? Gauntlet's been thrown down. Challenging yeah, bring it player versus player. <laughs> if you well, this is a podcast, so you can't see. But on John's, our logo does start with penguins, and then oh, possible, possible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, World. So, I really like this comic. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but like. Let's try not to be spoilers. It, it, it's it's kind of like ninjas versus Matrix, almost, except without powers, obviously. But um, <laughs> I, I thought it was really interesting. Um, it starts off, you know, kind of like the end of Happy Feet, <laughs> and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it's like action, you know. Right. And um, I, I just was really curious. How did you guys even get this concept? Because it's like way out there. But like when you read it, you're like, why hasn't this been done before? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that's what people think. Well. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian, I'll let you take this one. Um, Penguins versus Possums, the original idea came about um, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I had a final project for a website class, um, and I decided to make it all about this Armageddon that was ensuing, and um, I had already created this penguin character uh, in high school that was a very loud, obnoxious, uh, oakly sunglasses wearing spiked hair penguin and um for the project though i just made that i took away the personality of being obnoxious and whatnot and just made it about um this race of penguins and for whatever reason possums is what had to be the obvious nemesis came down to you from on high yes exactly it was bestowed upon me from the lord (laughs) and um um and so, so the whole website was about uh, kind of this mythology and um, kind of going through the ages, like since the dawn of time, these two have been at each other's throats. And uh, at that point, it was I, humans were choosing sides. Um, and I basically just used like pictures of my friends and photoshopped in penguins and possums and stuff. And, um, and there's some pretty cool ones that I remember because I was sort of just on the sidelines when just hearing about it a long time ago and... Just seeing like, oh, there's a picture just of a random street corner and Sebastian's gone in and drawn in a, a penguin sort of leaning around the corner, you know, sneakily or like, you know, he'll go back in on Photoshop on a street corner and, you know, put in the stencils or like put in, you know, choose a side and spray paint. It was, yeah, it was pretty yeah. cool. It had a lot of a definite air of mystery to it, which I which I found very appealing. Thank you. That, yeah, that was I think that's something I've always been to too, is is mystery and conspiracy and like there's something going on below the surface of what the rest of the world knows about mm-hmm. um so that's kind of where it began and then it stayed dormant for a little while i did some i'm also into spray paint so i did some stencils that were like choose a side and then kind of the logo thing and then uh just different uh possums and penguins things that i spray painted um but that's really as far as it went and then um john and i were working together and since we, we found out that we both really love to draw and uh, just kind of bonded over that. And I, he showed me some drawings that he had done. I showed him drawings that I had done, some of which was penguins versus possums. And uh, John? And worked it into a webcomic that we had. Well, it, it evolved into a webcomic. It was just something we did to kind of pass the time at the office with post-it <laughs> notes. Uh, drawn on post-it notes with Sharpies, just us battling each other and it grew and grew and kind of became a thing in the office that everyone enjoyed and uh, ultimately was um, I introduced the the penguin as sort of a tribute to Sebastian's character which I enjoyed and anyway from there it just kind of sprang a life of its own and 
became a website. Uh, we did we did the epic website, epicwebcomic.com, and then that had the three chapters. And when we were done with that, we had our uh, penguins versus possums, which was epic webcomic backslash pvp. So it was just sort of like a sister site. And anyway, I just eventually it was like, man, we should we should do this as a comic. We should because we had done uh, actually a long time ago. We have a trailer for it that's on YouTube. And uh, we did that trailer long before we ever did the comic. And I was watching the trailer one day, and I was just like, man, this is completely misleading. <laughs> this trailer has nothing to do with the webcomic. Why don't we make a, a real comic that actually, you know, gives us what we promise, give people what we promise in the trailer. And then the well, comic version was kind of born out of that. Yeah, and, that, and it does. I think the comic version does definitely deliver on that yeah. much more so. That was a kind of our goal because with the web comic it was completely just stream of consciousness back and forth pop culture references, pop culture references all over the place um ridiculousness definitely yeah and and began i don't know if we mentioned this but began in uh the purgatory coliseum run by chuck norris like that was our springboard for penguins versus boston i mean this, web is, comic. this is a story where aladdin aladdin from disney's up. aladdin is teleported. I guess he dies and needs to be judged in purgatory. And Anubis brings all these souls. An- Anubis, here, by the, way. the Egyptian god of death. Yes, and judgment. Uh, <laughs> and judgment. And uh, anyhow, Aladdin is brought among a new batch of souls, which also include a possum, a gremlin from Gremlins to the new batch, the smart gremlin, uh, and Pepe the Prawn, the Muppet. Uh, you know, just normal, <laughs> normal assortment of characters. Who you would expect to show up? <laughs> of course. And when yes, Chuck Norris right. finally dies uh, through crazy, crazy means. Uh, the smoke monster from Lost exits his body, enters Aladdin, and Aladdin becomes Mega Aladdin. That is just a, an example of what kind of weirdness that comic had, and it just yeah, that versus the trailer. If you put them yeah. together, is like you know, Apple's square when, background. When you're ball. done with Penguins versus Possums, could you make that into a comic book? <laughs> Mega, <well>? Mega Aladdin. <laughs> Mega Aladdin. I think I might get in trouble for that one. Chuck Norris, Mega Aladdin. Over, they're all over the the web comic though. Yes. If, if anyone wants to check that out, it's very weird, but I think it's worth your time. And the Shredder is in it, and yeah, everyone you yeah. can think of basically. Yeah, right. pretty much. So, but you, so, oh. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm I was just gonna say. So we from that the comic is a com- went in a completely different direction, much more the direction of. The original concept of these two have been at odds since you know the, since Pangea, and um, very few, if any, humans know about it. But it's becoming such this big battle that it's kind of spilling over into the human realm. Right. Yeah. Now you said that you mentioned a lot of pop references in there. Who did you use? What comics did you used to read growing up, and what com- what do you read now? Oh man. Well, one thing that I think we can both agree, and I hate to hate to admit this, but I think a huge influence on both of us was the comics of Rob Leefield or Layfield or Liefield. I don't know how how, did, how do you guys say his name? Liefield. Lee, uh, I've always said Leefield. It's up to what time of day and how tired I am. Okay. Well, for for my for my case, it's Rob Leefield. That guy, his comics are so bad, and it's it's amazing to me that that man has made as much money as he has drawing comic books because he cannot draw. But those comics influenced me. Jim Lee, I don't know if you could... I mean, if you look at my style, you can pretty much tell that I was an image comics kid. Yeah. Like, Rob Lee filled, uh, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, and uh, to a lesser degree, Martin Bagley. Obviously, he's not image, but those guys were, like, my definitive comics growing up. Um, yeah. Especially, Todd was always... Todd McFarlane was my favorite at the time, but if I had to name one artist that is my favorite of all time, it'd have to be Jim Lee. And Joe okay. Matarera... Uh, later on had a big influence on me too how about you said those were pretty much all my guys as well um also frank miller um yeah but uh, this guy's more normal stuff like (laughs) this is like actual other things i've seen like stuff he drew when he was like 12 one it's amazing especially for a 12 year old two it looks like so much like eric larson and uh and Frank Miller in a blender. It's it's the coolest style. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, no problem. No problem. How good am I? How good am I? You're so amazing. <laughs> Aww, You're like, thank you. Jim Lee put in a blender. <laughs> Woo! That's nice. Uh, and then today I still read a ton of comics. I read uh, pretty much anything Ed Brubaker writes. Love that guy. Um, I read X-Men and Spider-Man. I've, I've read those since I was like 12, so yeah. I just will never stop reading them, apparently. Uh, the Walking Dead's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, just like that handful of like uh, Image and Vertigo books that kind of Walking Dead, Fables, uh, Invincible. Yeah, I'm I'm a big Fables fan. Although I'm yeah. not I'm not very happy with where it's going right now. I, yeah, but it's in that sort of transition period, sort of like it was between the adversary and Mister Dark showing up. There yeah. was like a little lull there. Yeah. And now yeah. we're back into that, but I felt like they didn't. I felt like Mister Dark kind of just came and went too quickly. Yeah. I know he's they were fighting him for like a couple of years our time, but although with still. the um, la- I think I might be one behind, but the last one I read, someone discovered the box. The box. At the end of it, one of the girls got lost and discovered the box that, uh, Mister Nor- that their grandfather, the uh, North Wind. Oh right, when, what, uh, trapped himself in with the right with Mister Dark. With Mister Dark, you guys so, don't read fables. No, I, I take not it. at all. It's, and, uh, it's so awesome though. It is. Well, it's, it's great. It's and it's fits and starts. It, it's super awesome. Sometimes it is a little. It gets a little. I, it's one of those books. I suggest. I know that there's a lot of them out there, but pick it up from the beginning. Oh yeah, totally. Because it's it. If you get it from the beginning, you'll fall in love with the series. Yeah, I've been reading it since like issue five, and I think yeah. I'm on issue like one hundred nine right now or one ten. I, like I think it's about one twelve or one thirteen. God, I'm, I, I, might, I haven't been to the store in a while. So you don't know about the box, <laughs> I might be man. a little. Oh, long. of course. Spoiler. Uh, I don't know. I I, pick, I read the trades for so long. Oh, I see. And Last one I, I read started getting Buffkin, comics. Buffkin and. They were in Oz. Yeah. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Anyhow, so, moving on. Well, uh, back, back to, to PvP. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, now, uh, we talked about it earlier, Oz. but um, what side's the good side? Because the, even in the first issue, you know, you start out thinking one side's good, and then you go to the other side, and then you don't know how it's going to... Ho, ho, out. ho, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's actually kind of... I, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but uh, one aspect of the comic you could possibly call it a gimmick is the choose a side aspect where it uh we purposely made it and and like we were discussing earlier you kind of come out at the end thinking the possums are the good guys you kind of start at the beginning thinking the penguins are the good guys um but we, we're definitely trying to make a concerted effort to keep it ambiguous let the reader choose what side they would side with and i feel like um it was probably good that the possums sort of come out on top in the first issue like for, not even from a storyline perspective, but just from a the way the audience perceives them uh, in the first issue, because uh, I think people are going to not go for possums right away. Yeah, I think people are going to oh, tend to go penguins. for penguins. Yeah, right. penguins, because right. they're cute. They're widely loved. Um, so that was... I don't think that was necessarily intentional, giving the possums their day in the sun right away, but um, issue two is going to kind of explore more of the penguin side. The, they're, you know, maybe, you know look into their world a little bit more yeah issue one's definitely a possum centric book and and like you said it it it, it's they're sort of portrayed as a good guy but we are definitely trying to keep it as gray as possible and explore the the light and the dark of both species there was a depth of emotion here that i I was not expecting when i saw penguins versus possums i'm like i i care yeah (laughs) you know i have emotions here it's like what you know, but it, it was very well done. Thank um, you. Is, is that like is that the trend of the rest of the series? Like, is it gonna be like emotionally gripping? Well, that's what we like. Um, we really wanted, I think, because it's something that we wanted to do for so long. I'm sorry, I'm talking so no, much. Please, Sebastian. Uh, I think because this book is something that we've wanted to do for so long, and not even this book specifically, but just printing a comic is something that we wanted to do each since we were kids. So. <clears throat> um, it's sort of like if this is our one chance, we got to throw everything in there. Yeah, totally. You know, we got to make it funny. We got to make it, there's some cool action. We got to make it heartfelt. You know, got to just make it a neat idea. So it's like if we never do another one, at least we can say, well, we had that, and right. I'm pretty satisfied with yeah, that. You know, accomplished. Yeah. yeah so um, that was yeah. kind of the reason, but but I mean, I I um, personally I, I start I consider myself a director first, so I do movies. So and when you're doing movies, you strive to have all those things. And everything you do, even if it's like a slapstick comedy, you want to have some heart in there. So, yeah, that's kind of how I approached PvP. Was uh, at least from my aspect because I drew most of it, and um, obviously we did the story together and did the layouts and stuff together. But I definitely wanted to, you know, add add some layers to there that maybe on the surface you wouldn't immediately see. And as an actor, <laughs> uh, similarly looking for depth, and um, I mean. Penguins vs. Possums is just funny to say and funny to like think about the whole idea, even going into the mythology of 
uh, that they've been at odds since the dawn of time. I mean, it's and you're gonna have to choose it's a ridiculous. side yeah. in order to bring about Armageddon. I mean, yeah. that's that's all fairly silly stuff, and that's great, and we embrace that. But we also wanted to bring, like you said, to get people invested in it, to have some emotion. And I totally second John's thing about we didn't know if this would be the only thing we ever did. So it's like, what have you always wanted out of a comic? Let's get this and this and this and this and this, mm -hmm. and still make it a cohesive grouping story. That was definitely the plan and that's something we want to do for the rest of them too i mean yeah. we want to still leave some obviously there's going to be humor in there and all that kind of stuff uh it's just funny to see penguins holding uzis i mean right but right. at the same time we really like having things cost like that so that if somebody dies you feel something because they're dead it's not just a throwaway death and stuff right yeah now you uh so we were talking a little bit earlier that you have a lot of pop culture fascination different things um i found po different pop culture in the comic uh, such as uh, as we talked earlier the hall of elders i could relate it with the elders from green lantern mm -hmm. um and then there's also the penguins and i don't want to say how but their exit strategy versus oh, right. <laughs> uh, a previous uh batman movie right right <clears throat> um and then even uh oh, this might be a stretch a little bit, but to exterminate how predominant it was with Doctor Who and some of the villains in Doctor Who. Um, were those things meant to be, or did they just kind of happen and fall into it? Well, um, oh, I, think the, I, I think those are things that we wanted archetypes, and we wanted the... It's kind of that mythological story. I mean, it, it, as far as there are certain things that are staples of types of stories that we fully embraced and wanted to make use of right like i mean for instance it's just a it's a messianic story anyway it's it's a guy you know it's it's the story of the one you know which has <laughs> been told a billion different times yeah. a billion different ways and i'm honestly honestly just tired of those kinds of stories being told where it's oh it's a prophecy and you're the one you're gonna do this and that and the other um and so i was actually res kind of resistant to the idea at first but um, it was, yeah, it was sort of just the way, I guess. You <laughs> well, certainly haven't seen it told this way before. You definitely <laughs> haven't seen it told this way before, and I think it's popular for a reason, and I do think we do it differently. And I, yeah. I, I like that, I mean, I don't want to give too much away about the comic, but usually when there's a chosen one, they're exceptionally well at what they do. And with our hero, I, he stumbles, and he's not, and he's coward, at some points, cowardly, and, you know, it's uh, like... I think the way that we did it is different, yeah. and and the way it's going to progress is definitely going. Yeah, the way it progresses from here is completely throws everything upside down. Right, but the 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 beginnings of the story, if you were to read it and if you were to be a little bit more cynical, might come off as a little rote, like, uh, you know, like oh, we've seen this before. But again, yeah. as it progresses, as we 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 acknowledge that it's on purpose. Yeah, right? we are like embracing not... that. So and then. Cool. Um, on top of that, with the pop culture references um, and what have you, and the art, <clears throat> there's certainly lots to <laughs> lots to go around. Um, Are we yeah. ever gonna figure out where they got their weapon from? Yes. Oh, okay. One day. That's that's the whole choose a side aspect. They've, um, m for the most part, humans are kept in the dark. But right now, um, we haven't gone into it yet. But you know, we will see that the penguins probably have some sort of human connections to get these weapons and. Things like that, and there might be a level of control of the human race, you know, from the, like the penguins are pulling the strings, maybe a little bit. Wow. <laughs> so, <crazy>. Spoiler. <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just kind of like that's how we're going because, like uh, Sebastian was saying, it's like from Pangea, this has been going on. So right. before the beginning of time, so before man, before, before man, man, you know. Yeah. So since the ages of dinosaurs, and you know, so in fact, you you know, it's. Could say the dinosaurs are extinct because of the conflict between penguins and possums. Who knows, guys? Who knows? <laughs> actually, a little and a little known fact that I found out through researching: apparently, possums actually evolutionary wise have not changed much since prehistoric times. So the kind of possums that you see today mm. are largely the same as they were at the time of dinosaurs. Mm. Very interesting. So you're, you're welcome. More for a history that. book than fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. One other thing that we definitely um that sets the two species apart is 
the idea of the penguins being very technologically advanced and being embracing that and and that you know they've got machine guns they've got all this other stuff the possums are much more earthy and tribal and they have more spears or knives or stuff things like that uh throwing stars gorilla fighters. more gorilla fighters more ninja and the penguins are more samurai and soldiers and army yes very interesting very um i like how you set them apart so much but yet you could tell that there might be that there's something underlining them that makes them kind of the same right well so i mean they can't help but when you're you know it's hatfields and mccoys it's like they're probably they're just two sides two sides of the same coin right and you've been in the conflict forever so do they even know why they're fighting or is it just Um, something they do that's something I'm sure we'll get to. Yeah, that's something we want to <laughs> on, you know. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll get to it. But yeah. Uh, so what's your what's the feedback you guys have been getting? On it's this? been um, a lot of laughs when we were at the con. That's for sure. Yeah, so. it's been great. I mean, yeah. it's been uh, people seem to really be in, enjoying it, and uh, I'm happy to hear all the aspects that you enjoy of it. Right. Um, when we were at the convention, there was definitely a lot of. Oh my God! Ha ha! Like you know, they got yeah. all the humor yeah, of even it. Even if they didn't buy the comic, they look through it and guffaw at a couple of times before walking away. Which that's not quite as satisfying as getting money, but, <laughs> but it's up there. You but know? It, yeah, it has its Don't, own. No laughs are free here. <laughs> yeah. So um, where could someone go to get this comic? Uh, well, indieplanet.com is uh, that's we got it published through Kablam, so. Uh, it's on indieplanet.com um, and yes. comicsmonkey.com. We're we're actually setting up a penguins versus possums.com, which is penguins vs possums.com, and then we're gonna have a link on there to buy the comic. Very cool. And we're about to uh, release a re-edition of it, basically a second printing, uh, to thank our Kickstarter people that that are sort of responsible for it. We'll have an extra pin up in the back. We'll have a page to. To uh, thank the Kickstarter supporters, and we'll have a special green cover. Yeah, bright green cover. Yeah, so it'll be cool. It's pretty neat. If you guys had like one tip for anyone else trying to get into, you know, printing their own comic books, what would you, what would you say? Uh, well, personally, I would say at this day and age, just go for it. Don't let it hold you back. Don't let anything hold you back. Um, as we were talking about it earlier, I mean. If I would have done this, if I would have known about, you know, been 12 at, in 2011, you know, by the time I'm my age now, it would be a completely different game because of the opportunities that are out there. So it's just not being afraid to put yourself on a grand stage. I mean, that that held me back for many, many years, just a fear of what people might think. And, you know, not everyone's going to love everything you do. So get over that. But, um, yeah, just do it. Just and have a passion for it. If you have a passion for it, then just don't let anything hold you back. Yeah, I, I would say definitely more. And for me, more so than the the fear. I mean, the fear of that fear is always there, of course. But more so for me, it was the idea of it being like insurmountable, like it being this obstacle. That how do you even go about doing that? And I had a book that was like how to publish your own comics, and it's all it's from the '90s, but it's talking about you know buying big printers and buying like office space and <laughs> yeah. stuff. And I was like no way am I going to be able to do that, (laughs) you know? And, but now, as John was saying, in this day and age, I mean, it's so much more obtainable, a goal. And you can do it if you just put your mind to it. If you're passionate about it, you can do it. I mean, I actually, uh, I I did not meet him myself. I wish I would have, but my fiance was going grocery shopping the other day and she bought a comic, some kid who was, I think she said he looked about nine or 10. Um, she's not always the best judge of age, but anyway, he was selling a comic. He had made a comic that was like eight or 10 pages. He copied it on regular copy paper and was selling it outside of the grocery store. She paid him four bucks. That's more than we make for our comic. (laughs) (laughs) And it was for this thing just, you know, stapled on paper. It was the adventures of cold boy. And, um, it wasn't, you know, it's not obviously I was, you know, it's from a 10 year old. So, I mean, it wasn't like, Oh my God, this is amazing or anything, but it was like, you know what? That's really cool that I wish I would have been that industrious when I was a kid. I wish when I was 10 years old, I would have taken the comics that I drew because I did draw comics at that age and just gone out to a grocery store and just, you know, not been afraid to go out there and do it. So, like, you know, for that kid, you know, kudos. I, In case I don't you're listening, I, kid, good job. Yeah, good good job, <laughs> Adventures of Cold Boy Creator. Um, I still have that comic somewhere, but, um, you know, it's like, just go do it. Yeah. Like Nike cool. says. 
Very cool. Yeah. Um, now there's some artwork that's in the back. Um, that's just a full page artwork. Is that something that we should be looking towards, reflecting of the future, uh, comics? Uh, the pinups. Um, the the pinups. Yes, actually, I would say yes. Some of the stuff that is drawn in the pinups, uh, is somewhat of a hint to future the, the way things will progress. Um, on the topic of pinups. Pinups themselves are something that we want to keep going in every comic that we do. Because as a kid, I loved the pinups in the back. Like I just thought they were so cool to see a full page piece of artwork. Um, and so it's something that we both want to keep going for yeah. the rest of the, the I, rest of um, stuff. And uh, I just, I don't know how we divvied up the art necessarily, but it just sort of was agreed upon that I would do the interiors. I think I was just a... It was time. It was time. I had more free time and I'm... I guess more seasoned hand at doing the sequential art, so I don't know. That's it not was ne- time. That's not, that's that's not time necessarily time. true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Sebastian obviously did an amazing job with the pinups. They're great, and Sebastian yeah. is also going to get a lot more uh, screen time, shall we say? <laughs> in the next issue, we're going to divvy up the, the interiors a little bit uh, more evenly, which I'm excited about. He did two of my favorite pages, by the way, um, towards the end of the book where. <clears throat> the the bad guy penguin and the good guy possum are tussling um, for a couple of pages for this guy right here pen- pencils Thanks, man. and they're awesome they're really good so An- another thing too that we really focused on um, uh, thank you John for saying that first of all but I'm making up for the seasoned hand <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one thing that I was uh, hesitant actually actually to even um, put too much of my hand in there is we wanted it to have a really cohesive look we didn't want it to look like oh for these pages somebody brand new came in and yeah. it totally looks different oh i forgot there's a story going on um we wanted it to all look cohesive so th- i did the pencils on those pages but john still inked them so that it had you know it still looked like it was yeah cohesive. most people honestly can't tell the difference but i can and i those are my favorites so maybe it's because i didn't do them I yeah guess. i i I saw a little bit of a difference, but I figured it probably was because it was a pinup and not just smaller panels that you could do a little bit more with it right. and things like that. So I didn't right. know exactly what was uh, behind it because uh, there's the last pinup really kind of had me like wondering where it's going to go. The okay. uh, the last pinup of the penguins with the gas masks? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's I think that it tends to be everyone's favorite of the pinups. It is an incredible piece. Um, I love it. Uh, yeah, that is that sort of is definitely the biggest indicator of where this is gonna go. Um, yeah. We have kind of a rough-ish plan um, of where it will go up to, you know, maybe like six issues, yeah. say, and that's kind of. We have a good plan. It's just we've left it rough for detail. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's kind of where it goes from there. Like by yeah. issue, probably like six, you'd see things like that coming. Very cool. So, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, speaking of missed issues, uh, when can people expect issue two to come out? Um, well, hopefully soon. We uh, sorry, Sebastian. No, I, no, I always talk first. We're we're hoping to have it done by. Uh, we are definitely going to WonderCon, which is in March. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're Anaheim, planning to go. We'll you guys tomorrow. gonna be there too? We're yep. trying to. Nice. Cool. We'll see you. We'll, we'll see, see you then. then. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <clears throat> we're trying to get into San Diego, but they're like, well, no. Yeah, we kind we're of trying to. <laughs> yeah. trying to. like we were we were a little late on the deadline, but they were. Uh, I talked to the guy on the phone, and he was like, "Well, I'll send it in. It's by jury, so we'll see what happens. You've got till November, whatever." So that one's kind of up in the air. And we're kind of kicking ourselves for not doing Kamikaze. Did you guys go to that? Yeah, yeah, we did. We yeah. we just came back and we were exhausted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm then sure. we're going to. Um, we're going to uh, PMX, PMX tomorrow. What's PMX? <laughs> uh, Pacific Media Expo. Yeah. Oh, wow. What is that? It's like a three-day um, anime. Uh, oh. it's, it's anime and sci-fi. And oh, we could have done that sci-fi. too. Wait, bro, oh, where, where is are it we in? at? Oh, it's yeah, LAX. Yeah, the Hilton, oh, it's at LAX. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Hilton right next to the LAX. Next year. Yeah, we're also gonna do PowerCon for no reason. The He-Man convention. We're gonna just do that. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna show. We're up. gonna just go garage to, sales. We're gonna do BotCon <laughs> next year. Uh, yeah, just everything we can get into. We're just gonna lie. But to address your question, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Penguins vs. Possums issue two. We plan to have ready at WonderCon. So okay. by March is our by March. Goal. Um, we have another uh, comic between then, but yeah, yeah, we'll Very have cool. it. We'll have it by then. Very cool. Uh, 
I get uh, my question would be if what what would you want to either art or write if someone gave you the reins to anything out there what would you want to do oh i know absolutely what i would want to do but i'll let sebastian <laughs> tackle this one um i the first thing that jumped into my mind was hulk i'd love to draw hulk oh my god that would now, be sweet um, if you drew the hulk that would be tight. hulk is my all time number one favorite anything you really, yeah i love hulk as well <laughs> and i just i monster type stuff like i i would love to draw that comic mm-hmm. book. you are now my favorite <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm uh, not a huge Hulk fan, so yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not a huge Hulk. John has a I'm not a huge Hulk fan either, but I think if Sebastian were drawing the Hulk, that would be super awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, You're starting to make up for that season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, without a doubt, without question, X Men, Uncanny X Men. Uh, yes. That would be it. I would write and draw it, and I'd bring Nightcrawler back and make him the star. Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler. is great. He's awesome. Yeah, he is sorely missed, and I know they brought him like Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler back. Yeah. And X Force. I've been, I'm not reading it, but that's almost enough to get me to read it. But, uh. Uh, I would bring Nightcrawler back. I would take it back to like being classic, you know. Well, you know, as as best I could. But that would be the dream for me. I would. I think that would be great, primarily because I know you love X Men so much. Like the passion that you put into it, I think would be great. Yeah, but sometimes I don't know. Sometimes that doesn't translate. All well, that you're, well. <laughs> and you're talented as well. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, as far as my skill set, I'd probably be good on. If I were to realistically draw something, I don't know, probably something in DC. I'd have more of a DC art style, like Nightwing or something. But okay. I'd, I'd, I'd be do, I'd do Nightwing. If somebody offered it to me, <laughs> DC <laughs> Comics, if you're listening. <laughs> Almost said Denny O'Neill, like Denny O'Neill is still the editor. Paul DiDio, that, that's your name, right? Or Dan DiDio. Bob Kane, if you're listening. <laughs> Jerry Siegel. Jerry. Yeah, if I remember it correctly, wasn't Nightwing your favorite? Uh, Nightwing is one of my favorite comics that they're out with the new DC 52 and I actually yeah. met the creator of Nightwing nice. over at Kamikaze the creator that is doing it now or the, the guy the who, guy that's doing it now not the creator Dick Grayson he's, but. Uh, he's also the one that uh, he was part of uh, Gates of Gotham okay so sweet very talented man, gentleman is I he can't remember right his name it or? Uh, I know he's an artist I want to say he writes it as well nice He'd gone to Kamikaze. Oh, I could have been. I could have said, "Hey, bro, can I draw Nightwing?" He said, "Sure." He was, Why he, not? Was, he was actually after doing uh, sketches for people for free. Nice. As long as they yeah. came up with a piece of paper, and he would sign the comics for everyone for free. People came up with stacks of like twenty comics and wow. just had them sign them. He just had I contracts. People were getting jobs in DC. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Christmas. I gotcha. <laughs> oh. And I was sitting at home <laughs> playing video games. Um, but yeah. So, um, that's just my daydream of what I will do <laughs> if I ever were to break out in comics. Very cool. Uh, so, it seems like you're going to be very busy with comics uh, coming up because of a couple, a couple of different titles and things like that. And then doing the uh, con tour. Yeah, we're definitely wanting to do a circuit next year rather yeah. than we just did Long Beach this year. And I tell you what, man, the, the day after going back to work on that Monday was the worst feeling in the world. I mean, I work on a TV show, and TV shows are fun to work on, and they're cool or whatever. But man, that was the worst. I was just like, God, I want to be at the con still. I want to be drawing sketches for people. I want to be selling comics. And That's the yeah. bad part of cons. Like, you're in another world for a weekend. Yeah, it, it's, it's true. true. And then life comes back. It's like, hey, buddy, I'm still here. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So we're, we're definitely planning on doing a good handful of cons next year. Um, yeah, it's a we, high. Like it's a high. Being it really there, you is. Know? It's amazing. Yeah, it was. It was the best feeling. And and since it was our first one too, and our first published comic, it was just like, man, we have, you know, we are comic creators. The, yeah. For yeah. truly for the first time, like we've been creating comics since we were children. But man, it's this is it. This is this. We've made it. This is the big game. <laughs> this yeah. is the World Series right here. This is your Super Bowl, right? Here. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. This is WrestleMania. <laughs> Or your NBA um, playoffs since we don't have real ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try to ride that, chase that dragon all next year. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, do as many comics as we can because it's fun. Sounds good to me. I'll definitely be looking out for them. To Thank read you. Them. Awesome. Thanks. Um, anything? Else? Um, the the Uzi in the beginning was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Very unexpected. I was like, okay, this is cool. Oh my god, an Uzi. What? It's like, yes. it like Ninja Stars. I'm like, this is it one was, of the greatest things it ever. It was a, a definite bait and switch. It was, uh, <laughs> let's give him the serene scene for a minute and then 
turn around its ear. And it was a conscious decision to have the splash page at that yes, point. Yes, we, well. we, had, we had a whole discussion. That's why we actually put in the first page, which is like, oh, the dawn of time. Because normally that kind of page would go on the inside cover. And that would have been fine, but I was like, "Oh no, we can't have. We have to have them turn a page right. into this shocking turn scene of violence." Death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> into dramatic it's violence. Like all opening of a your eyes to the what's underneath the world you see. You know? oh, yeah. yeah, right. Nailed it, trippy bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very, no, good well, very well done. I'm Thank looking you. forward to to the second one. Thanks, Thank thanks you. guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us so, on. I'll go yeah. to WonderCon if not just for that. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, one comment sold already. <laughs> Perfect. Um, is there anything else you want to tell our uh, listeners and fans or anyone that you want to give a shout out to? Sure. Well, I'll do the uh, the roundup of what we're, we're doing real quick. Sure. Um, right now we have Epic Web Comic backslash PVP, which that's the, uh, it's kind of on a hiatus at the moment, but we do have a, uh, uh, weekly adventures of um, the penguin and a possum. Not anything to do with the comic. <clears throat> and uh, to support the comic itself, we're about to start penguinsvspossums.com. That's penguinsvspossums.com. And uh, that'll probably spin off also into we're about to start a comic called Crossover, or a working titles crossover where we handle some characters from when uh, we were kids. More of a superhero uh, kind of thing. So, and a shout out to. My fiance Lindsay, who uh, helped write a lot of the dialogue in the comic, and uh, was a huge help, and she's actually the whole reason we kind of did this, because she suggested we do the Kickstarter and helped us develop that, and she has been the biggest help and, you know, a huge, huge person in this, and she should be here now probably, but <laughs> um, she's at home washing her tights. <laughs> um, money, money, money. Uh, hubba 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 who do you trust <laughs> um, big sh- yeah big shout out to uh, my girlfriend as well um, always incredibly supportive and um, <laughs> although comics aren't her thing suffered through day one of comic con without his girlfriend or fiance there um, but she's great and she's uh, she's been incredibly supportive um, beyond that uh, all of our kickstarter supporters um Big thanks to them. I mean, it, it that's what got the comic printed and everything. Um, also, please check out our website, and we will Yay. have t-shirts and comics and all that other good I'm stuff. Let me give a there. final shout out to you guys for having the yes. good sense to have us on your first <laughs> ever comics podcast. Yep. yep. Yeah. Thanks. Well guys. done, fellas. <laughs> Well, th- thanks for coming. Thank you very much. All right. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it was I, it I don't was know blast. how we're going to top penguins fighting <laughs> possums for our next one. So I, I feel know. sorry for you, next person. You, you won't be able to. <laughs> just acknowledge now you won't be able to, and you'll be able to move on. From it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill from here, boys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank, right. thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. So this is Dismal Elephant here with John Bring, Sebastian Kadlecik, and Kirby Kid. Creators of Penguins vs. Possums. The greatest comic book ever. All right. (laughs) Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Peace.